let's judge these banned cards and see if they're worthy of being pulled off the list or not. Hey everyone, and welcome to back to an ongoing series where we take a look at Yu-Gi-Oh's TCG ban list and discuss whether or not a card can come off of it with or without erratas. So, like before, um, or as usual, uh, we'll take a look at last week's comments uh, from Tenebrae17, uh, starting with Return from Different Dimension. Uh, long before links, dragon rulers. Yeah, um, that's another archetype I never heard of before, which were the dragon rulers. Uh, I looked that up, and honestly, I thought that was a, a set, not a archetype of monsters. <laughs> so yeah, um, uh, quite a lot of large monsters. A lot of uh, flipping. Okay, yeah, yeah, that uh, yeah, that sounds about right. The main reason why I mentioned like links and all that is that it made it, it seemed like one of those things that could help contribute to extra link plays. So yeah, uh, these games were longer and grindy. And, yeah, it, it the way that you have a word, it made me. Th it makes me think of certain combos that take a while to play nowadays. Today, it's a much slower card and can't meaningfully contribute to turn zero one one plays. Uh, would also likely not see play. Well, this last part of it, maybe outside of, like, uh, perhaps Flow. Uh, I'm not sure what other decks would benefit from that, but Flow would probably be one of them, considering that's all they do is send out a play. Uh after being uh, tributed. So, yeah. Uh, if Red Reboot resolves in any match, you actually want to side it. Just leave it dead. It being a trap, meaning it's completely un unambiguous. and can be activated. Well, there are cards that are super specific as to when you can play them that mainly why I mentioned that. Um, there was an old uh, normal magic card that... Uh, oh my goodness. Okay, yeah, it was uh, Curse of Fiend. That card specifies that you can only play it during the standby phase. So, I think there were other ones, but I forget which ones. But, like I said, that's why I mentioned it, because there were cards that were super specific as to when you were allowed to play them. So, yeah. Uh, Verte Anaconda, if it came back, would give nearly anything the ability to add Dragoon or destroy your Phoenix Enforcer to any board on top of what it does. And limited to for a plant for material would mean having to play Orifice Scorpio or Darling Tonia Cobra and getting to search a fusion spell on top of that at the cost of playing a lot more slots. Yeah, that's why I mentioned having it uh, monster type specific instead of uh, like light, dark, beast, beast war, stuff like that. That would limit what you're able to do. So, yeah. Uh, Premature Barrel was banned because it can bounce without destroying a summon monster. Yeah, early, early Yu-Gi-Oh! didn't really future-proof anything, for the most part. There are some cards that seem future-proof, um, that still get played, regardless. So, uh, Brionic, Dragon of the Ice Barrier was the main offender. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, any, mm. uh, what am I thinking of, over, Synchro Monster, uh, would do something like that, so, uh, pretty much, okay, uh, most bounce effects that interact with Skull Trapped, they are hard ones to return, it can bounce your own cards, yeah, 
Uh, nobody's playing Monty Reborn now. Premature may actually do very little at this point. Well, I mean, outside of Marincess that does play with Monster Reborn, I haven't actually seen any decks play it. Well, new built decks play it. So, uh, who knows? It could just be a once one and done and then uh, bring it out just to keep... Ch uh, Keep the chain going in terms not the chain. Keep the play going. Extend the play. Whatever words. Uh, okay, so and last uh, but not least, Speed Duel isn't actually axe. It's currently on release hiatus. Uh did it evaluate how to put mass GX instead of bouncing between dual monsters and GX? Yeah, that that will take a, a hot minute, but it's pretty much just based off of what I've heard from other big Yugi tubers. Now, I know that the OCG already does have a rush duel, because I've seen a video uh, where not, like, um, MBT or, what was it, TGS anime or... No, none of the ones I've normally watched Whereas actually, uh, this guy was actually uh, cracking open a box of uh, Rush Duel cards in the OCG. So, yeah. But, like I said, it, it's theorized. So. Alright, so with that out of the way, let's take a look at today's cards. Which... Uh, Let's get to the first one. And that one is Royal Oppression. Royal Oppression is a normal, uh, it's a continuous track card. And its effect is either player can put, either player can pay 800 life points to negate the special summon of a monster and or an effect that special summons a monster and destroy those cards. Okay, so this card itself, the problem with it, it has no once per turn effect. And it would be abused by whoever owned it until the card itself was gotten rid of. So, yeah. Now, how could this card come back? Well, technically speaking, yeah, I would say a hard no on its original effect. But if there was a set number of times that it could be used, like, well, let's just go with once per turn. Um, it could come back as one. But in its normal form, no. Uh, other than that, I don't know if anybody would play the original outside of, like, super specific formats. Um, but yeah. They would have to be an errata to the card to have it see play again. Okay. Now for the next card. Which is Ronin Toten. Ronin Toten. Ronin Ronin Toten is a level two water aqua effect monster, and its effect is cannot be used for cannot be used in synchro material as synchro material. This card's name becomes Des Frog while on the field. If this card is in your graveyard, you can banish one frog monster from your graveyard. Special summon this card. So, Ronin Toten was used to link and overlink, overlay multiple times, was also combined with Mass Driver when the Toad format, when the Toad decks were massive. Um... 
and it has no once per turn effect. Hooray. So, could this card come back? Well, first off, I haven't seen a Toad deck be played in a while, or a Frog deck be played in a while. So, maybe? Other than that, the card would have to have a once per turn effect on its graveyard ability. And beyond that, I could see it coming back as one, maybe. Not two, because you could probably still cycle it out that way. Um, but, like I said, I, I, can, I can imagine it coming back at one with an errata. And if, like, the people weren't, like, too high on wanting to run frogs anymore or anything that re re would evolve, revolve around that, um, that it could come back at one. It's not too powerful, even with this effect, outside of being able to just continuously cycle through frog cards. So, a higher chance of it getting an errata and then coming back at one than not an errata and doing so. So, yeah. All right. Uh, time for card number three, which is... Self-Destruct Button. Self-Destruct Button is a normal trap card, and its effect is you can only activate this card while your life points are lower than your opponent's life points. And the difference is 7,000 or more. Both players' life points become zero. Now, there are some combos that you can do for this card. One of them involves an incredibly old uh, continuous trap, which was Mirror Wall. And Mirror Wall's effect was pay any number of life points in increments of 1,000. Your opponent cannot attack... Um, with monsters with less than that amount that you had paid. And you could just straight up pay 7,000 right there on the spot. And afterwards, you could play Self-Destruct Button. Uh, I think there were other ones that were just straight up, okay, life point cost, and then activate Self-Destruct Button. Uh, the card itself was very toxic because people would continuously uh, end duels in tournaments w with a draw with this card all the way up to the end timer. So it really all depends on if you win the first duel or you just continuously do it. To the point where the first bit of damage is done and bam, you win. Could this card come back uh, with its original effect? No. Uh, it would have to get a wholly unique uh, errata to it, much like the once per duel, well, when, when it first came around, which was the once per duel things. Um, I would say the effect they would attach to this one depends on uh, if there were any others that were this toxic. Um, once per match. And then the second part of it would be once this card's effect has resolved the owner has to slot it into their side deck and swap it out. Something close to that. So, yeah. Um, and then I can maybe see it being at one, but even then, I don't know if it would be worth uh, eroding a uh, self-destruct button at all. But outside of it, who cares? <laughs> outside of tournaments, who cares? Um, but yeah. 
And for the last card for today is Six Cents. Six Cents. It's a normal trap card with the effect of declare two numbers from one to six. Then your opponent rolls a six-sided die, and if the result is one of the numbers you declared, you to draw you draw that many cards. Otherwise, send a number of cards from the top of your deck to the graveyard equal to the result. And why was this banned? Well, funny enough, uh, Tenebrae 17, you had mentioned the Dragon Rulers. This was another card that the Dragon Rulers effectively got banned as well, because regardless of the the result of the dive throw, he would still call for milling out the deck in one way or another, either from to hand or to graveyard. Now, could this card come back? Honestly, I have, I, as I mentioned before, I've never heard of Dragon Rulers, so that means that there's probably other decks that could run this. But... The ability to be able to just mill out cards is probably um, probably just too strong still, but it's not as strong as, say, some decks already do. Um, could it come back? I don't know. This is a toss-up. And I'm not sure if there's any actual change that could be done to it other than, yeah, I'm not sure. There could be, I'm just not seeing it, but there are plenty of decks, there's plenty amount of decks that could benefit from melding of the deck from a die throw, so... They probably have to limit it from 1 to 6 to 1 to 3 at most. But I'm just throwing out ideas. So, and with that, uh, it'll, and with that, that's the last card for today. And next time we will take a look at the next four. But until then, everybody, happy deal line.